Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 14.2 to the public. That means that it's out for everyone around the world at the same time on all iOS 14 supported devices. That means if you have an iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, all the way up to the iPhone 12 series phones, you'll have this update. And if you're not seeing it, all you need to do is go to your settings, then go down to general go to software update and under software update, it should show you an update. If you're not seeing that update, go into your automatic updates or automatic downloads, turn them off, go back and check for an update and it should be there. Now this particular update was fairly large and should be a very large size for most people. It came in at 4.34 gigabytes on my iPhone 12, as you can see here. And this particular update has a ton of new features and bug fixes and things and should be very good for most people. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's new. Now, if you're already on iOS 14.2 RC or release candidate, which is the same thing as the GM, Apple must have found a bug because they've updated this for you as well. So you'll also have an update under software update. If you're not seeing it and you're a developer or beta tester, delete the profile and then check for the update again, and you'll have an update to go to the next version of 14.2, which is the same version everyone else in the public gets if you're not already on that version. Now, as far as this particular update, well, along with iOS 14.2, Apple also released iPadOS 14.2, along with watchOS 7.1 and HomePod OS 14.2, and also macOS Big Sur release candidate 11.0.1. So a lot of updates today. Now this update, like I said, has a new build number. So let's take a look. We'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about, and you can see the build number is 18 B 92 And this update has a lot of different changes and features. And the first one is if you're coming from iOS 14.1, you'll have a modem update. So you'll have a modem update, hopefully to help with connectivity, whether that be on an older device, like an iPhone 10 R or an iPhone 11, 11 pro max, even though they're not that old, you'll still have a modem update, or at least that's what I was seeing. Now let's take a look at what's new. Now the first new update has to do with Shazam or being able to capture audio and then have it tell you what it is. Now you could do this with Siri before you could do this with shortcuts as well. But now if we go into control center, we now have a new icon. We press on this icon. It will listen for music and tell us what it is. If it doesn't hear anything within a set amount of time, it turns off. So let me go ahead and play some music from this phone and I'll show you how it works. Of course, I'll have to mute it. So I'll hit the button here. It says it's listening. And so you can see, it says the song here, where we go. So it picked it up. It let me know what it was with notifications and that's it. So that's pretty simple. There's also some additional updates to music as well in the control center. So whatever you were last playing will show up of course, but if you press and hold on it, you now have a little bit of a new interface. It looks a little bit different, gives suggestions of other songs you might like. And if you're in music, and maybe you're not playing anything at all. We close it out and then we go back in press and hold. It will give us suggestions of things we might like as well. So not only will it show us what we're playing, but it will give suggestions. Also, if we press on airdrop, we have a slightly different interface. If you have a home pod, you'll have a new interface down here as well. But if you're connected to one, it'll look slightly different, but this is the new interface overall for music. The same is true on the lock screen with music. So if I go ahead and hit play, we'll turn the volume down. We'll go ahead and go to the lock screen. You'll see it's here and it's a little bit of a different interface. They've changed it around a little bit, just slight tweaks to music, but that's all new. Now, also, if we go into the home app, they've made some changes as well. There's a new discover button. So if we press on discover, we can go through some of our different applications, see discover, and we have a new icon for home. So they've changed the icon a little bit, nothing major, but that is a change. Now, another change they've made has to do with AirPods and this one I really like. So if you connect your AirPods pro, let's go ahead and do that. I'll put one in my ear. Hopefully it will connect to the iPhone I'm using and it did and it has that automatic switching, but we have some new options. Now, if we go into settings, for example, and then we go to Bluetooth, press the I here and we have some new options. So not only do we have transparency and everything, we have the option to change some of those settings. So we also have a new setting for optimized battery charging. So you can see it says to reduce battery aging, iPhone and AirPods learn from your daily charging routine. So AirPods can wait to finish charging past 80% until you need to use them. This will extend how it actually lasts as far as your battery and hopefully extends it significantly. There's also some updates to hearing as well. So if we go into our settings 
and then go to sound and haptics, we now have headphone safety. This is a little bit of a new menu. And what you have is headphone notifications. If the music is too loud, you can actually set the decibel level level here. You can reduce loud sounds and you can see, we can change it. So, and it tells you as loud as a motorcycle, as loud as an ambulance siren. So I have it notify me if it goes above 80 decibels. And then you can see this in the health app as to what you're hearing and how loud it is. You could see some of that before, but now it works with AirPods and will give you that information. Now within this update, there's also updates to wallpaper. So if we go into settings and then we go to our wallpaper, go to choose new wallpaper, go to stills. We have some new wallpapers. And so you can see, we have eight new wallpapers, starting with some that look like mountains from big Sur. So you'll see, we have perspective zoom on for either one of those, but those are some rocks. We go to the next one. We'll go to the third one again, more rock formations Then the fourth one, another set of rock formations. And then we can go to the next one, which looks like the Pacific coast highway, but it's drawn out. So it's sort of a sketched out version or a cartoon overlay of it. Then the next one looks like it's sort of a river or lake in a valley again, drawn. And then the next one is a desert. And then the last one is sort of a lake or shorefront on sort of a drawn out mountainous shorefront area. So with some flowers and things now, all of these have dark mode as well. So if I flip on dark mode, I won't show you all of them, but I'll show you a couple. If you use the drawn, the new drawn out wallpapers, they have sort of a bluish purple color to them in dark mode. And I've said this before, I'm not a huge fan of this particular color. I wish it would be a little bit more colorful at night, but I guess it would help reduce the overall brightness of the display. Again, if you go into one of the rock formations, you'll have sort of a starry sky there as the background instead of the sky. And then it's a little bit darker. So they're all really nice. I think they're great updates and they're included with iOS 14.2. Now within iOS 14.2, there are over 100 new emoji and those include emoji for different animals, food, faces, household objects, musical instruments, gender inclusive emoji, and more. So if I scroll through, you'll see there's a plunger, there's a screwdriver, a hook, a boomerang, some roller skates. We'll go through here, go up to the top. You can see there's a little ninja, there's an anatomical heart. So we have all of these new ones and you may discover some more as well. So those are all new to bring us up to the latest Unicode standard, just like everyone does on Android and windows and Mac as well. So we have all of these across all those platforms to bring us up to whatever's the latest. Now, if you have an iPhone, 12 pro with the LIDAR sensor, or you have an iPad pro with the LIDAR sensor, there's a new feature. So as long as you have a device with a LIDAR sensor, you can go into the new magnifier app, or I should say magnifier app. It's not terribly new and you have a new feature. It can detect people nearby. So if I triple click, that's a quick way for me to get into magnifier. We go in here, go to settings. And we now have an option for people detection. And what this will do is see a person and then actually measure the distance to that person. So you hold it up and it gives you the distance to that person. It's a really nice option. It's using the LIDAR sensor to actually bounce light off and tell you the exact distance to that person. And it's person specific. Maybe it will recognize more things in the future, such as objects and animals. But right now it really only measures people and it will recognize them if they're in a scene. Now there's a MagSafe accessory we haven't seen yet for the iPhone 12 and 12 pro series phones. And that is a new leather sleeve. Apple announced it, but they never released it. And this adds support for it. So let me show you what that looks like. And as you can see, this is what the leather sleeve looks like. It sort of has an always on display with the time displaying through it. I'm not sure that I like this very much. It'll be interesting to maybe see one in person and try it out. But this particular update adds support for that sleeve. So when the sleeve is available in the store, you'll be able to use it. So of course that's a good thing. Now also this update adds support for inner intercom use. So maybe you have a home pod at home or the new home pod mini. When those come out, you'll have the ability to use your phone or your home pod as an intercom by talking to Siri to do it. So it supports not only home pod and home pod mini, but iPhone, iPad, Apple watch, AirPods, and CarPlay. You can use them and send a, an intercom message to them. Now I don't have a home pod here in this particular area, but if you go to home and you do have a home pod in your home, 
you can press and hold and use the intercom setting. Now, something that's really nice is if you have an Apple TV, which I'm surprised this was mentioned in an iOS update, but if you have an Apple TV 4k, you can use HomePod for stereo surround sound and Dolby Atmos audio. So you have the ability to connect the HomePod to that device to use it for stereo sound. So maybe you get a couple HomePod minis. You can use those as maybe a home stereo system. Maybe you can do more later in the future where we could use them as surround sound. That would be nice, but that's a feature that they've added. Now there's also an update for exposure notifications. So if you have an app installed that uses it and you've enabled it, you'll have a new option. So if we go into settings, scroll down, go to exposure notifications, you'll see, I have an app installed. This is not from where I live, but it was just for an example. What there is, is there's a new option to provide statistics about exposure notifications without identifying you to participating public health authorities. So you can actually share that information with public health authorities. If you'd like to do that, of course, anonymously. And if you don't want to use this, of course, you can just turn it off, turn it off and it won't be here at all. You can see if you have availability alerts, but basically if this is off, it's not working. Otherwise install an app for your local state or government, and you'll have the ability to turn that on if you want to. Now with the iPad, there's a couple new features. Now the odd thing is some of them are specific to new iPads. For example, the new iPad air has some specific features to do with the camera. So within the camera, iPad Air fourth generation or the 2020 iPad Air now has scene detection and it uses an intelligent image recognition to identify objects within that scene and make the photo better. So maybe it recognizes my iPhone here, my iPad Pro over here, maybe this iPhone here, and it will help take better photos because it knows what it is and it exposes properly for it. So that's something they've added, whether or not that's in the iPad pro or other iPads is hard to say, but they've added it to the iPad air specifically for this. Like I said, the iPad pro also gets the option for using the LIDAR sensor with this iPad pro, which is really nice. So you'll be able to use that iPad pro to identify people, like I said earlier. And then also again, with the iPad air, there's auto frames per second in the camera. So we'll go into the camera again. If we go to video, there's now auto FPS based on the overall brightness in the frame. So if you're in low light, for example, it will optimize the frame rate to bring up the quality of the video. So maybe you're in very dark conditions, the frame rate could change. So I'll turn the lights off here and maybe we'll point it at a darker area and turn that back off. And you'll see, I recorded some video and it may have dropped the frame rate to help with the video overall. So hopefully it improves it. Of course, I don't take much video with this iPad air, but it should improve it. If you have one of those, it's only specific to this device though. And so those are the updates to the iPhone and the iPad air, but there are a ton of bug fixes as well. So let's go over those. Now, the first major bug fix has to do with the dock. For some people, the dock apps could be out of order all of a sudden, and this should be resolved now. So if you were having that issue, it should be resolved. Also, I know quite a few people were having this issue last time they fixed it for the iPhone seven series, but now it's fixed for everything. If you open the camera, sometimes it would just be a blank screen or it would never turn on the camera module. It appears they've fixed that on all phones now. So it should be working properly across all of them. Now, the next thing has to do with the lock screen. If you're on the lock screen and you're trying to enter a passcode, for example, and maybe you had some issues, let's see if we get the passcode. Maybe you had some issues putting in your passcode. The touch responsiveness has been improved for this. So it should now work properly. So we'll try it again. There we go. And we're in now. The next thing has to do with reminders. If you use reminders, there was an issue where some of the reminders could revert to a previous date that's now been resolved. Now, Apple has also fixed quite a few issues with their widgets. So for example, one of them they fixed is the weather widget. So where the temperature may show Celsius instead of Fahrenheit for the high. So they've fixed that. They've also fixed where the next hour precipitation chart descriptions and weather might show it incorrectly or indicate when it stops incorrectly. So they fixed that. They've also fixed the photos widget, not displaying content. So hopefully there's a bunch of issues fixed, whether or not they fix the clock widget. I'm not sure they didn't mention that specifically, but hopefully they did. Now, if you use the voice memos app and maybe you received a phone call prior to this update, 
the phone call would stop the voice recording. Now that won't happen anymore. You can swipe the phone call away. It won't interrupt your voice recording at all. So they've fixed that issue. They also fixed an issue. If you use Netflix and the screen was just completely blank, that should be resolved as well, which is kind of odd specific to Netflix. And then also if you're using Apple cash, it may fail to send when using Siri. This has been a long time issue. They've now resolved it. Now, also, if you're using the Apple watch app for some people, it would just unexpectedly close. So now that's been resolved. And then also when you're using your watch, maybe you're doing a workout and you're running or just taking a walk, the GPS routes or health data were not syncing properly with the phone that has now been fixed. So that's something that my wife had and my family had that's been fixed in this update, which is great. Now, if you use Apple CarPlay, audio could have incorrectly been labeled as not playing, even though audio was playing. So they've fixed that issue. If you were having that with audio on CarPlay, and then also if you were having an issue with your device, wireless charging, well, that's now resolved on I, all iPhones. So that doesn't have to do with just MagSafe or anything like that. Some people were having their phone wirelessly charged to 90% and stopping or 70%. All of those issues should now be resolved. Now, another thing they've fixed is maybe you're going from an iPhone 11 to an iPhone 12, or maybe an iPhone seven to an iPhone 12. Anytime you would go from the old one to the new one, if you were using exposure notifications, sometimes it was not transferring over properly and enabling it by default. If you had it enabled before, and now it will transfer all of the settings properly. So all of that has been fixed and it will be turned on. If you had it turned on before, if not, it won't be on. So those settings have been resolved. That's it for all of the fixes they've mentioned and all of the new features, but they also updated security, but they haven't specified what those security updates are. So it's hard to say exactly what those are, but they have resolved those. Now, as far as using this, well, I've been using this update for a few days now, and it's been pretty fast on all of these devices. Of course, it's going to be fast on a newer iPhone 12, but last year's iPhone 11, 11 pro, they're going to have similar results. Everything seems to be really smooth. And from those I've heard that have been using it for a while, they've really had no complaints. They've said that it's been stable, it's been working well, and they've had no issues whatsoever. So that's a great sign. Now, overall battery life of iOS 14.2 will take a few days to measure for sure, but those that were using the release candidate or the early version released to developers and beta testers have been having halfway decent battery life. So if we go into battery life, we'll take a look at it, go to the last 10 days. You can see that yesterday I, I had three hours and 41 minutes of screen on time, three hours and six minutes of screen off time and had about 80% of my battery used. That's not phenomenal for an 11 pro max, but I normally got about six hours, five and a half to six hours on the iPhone 12 pro. If we take a look at the iPhone 12, we should have similar battery life, maybe a little bit better, but if we go to battery, wait for it to load. Again, you can see the last day I used it. I had, well, not great battery life there, but I had four hours of screen on time, three hours and 11 minutes of screen off time. And again, used about 80% of my battery. The next day was only two and a half hours. So it really depends on the day, but most people that have been using it and reporting back to depending on what device they're using. Most people are saying they're getting the 10 to 12 hours of screen on time that they normally would with the iPhone. So that's a great thing. And I'm seeing the same thing on the iPad air that I've been using full time for a while. So again, if we go back, I haven't used it over the past three days a whole lot, but even with the RC version, three hours and 24 minutes of screen on time, and I'm getting phenomenal battery life. Either way, I think this fixes most of those battery problems that most people have talked about, and hopefully it's resolved for you. And of course I'll do a follow-up if you'd like me to let me know in the comments below. So should you update to iOS 14.2? I would say absolutely at this point. Performance seems to be that of iOS 13.7 or along those lines. So no issues there, maybe even a little bit better. The battery issues seem to be fixed at this point that people were concerned about with iOS 14 and overall stability has been really good lately. So I wouldn't worry about too many issues with that. I would definitely upgrade. You'll get all the advantages of the security updates the new features, and of course, all of the bug fixes as well. But let me know your experience about it in the comments below. So that's it for iOS 14.2. Hopefully it makes your phone much more stable. I know it did for most people that I'm seeing already with the previous version that was released to the developers and beta testers first. And so hopefully your experience is better. I know most people are saying it has much better battery life. Now, whether or not we see an iOS 14.3 or 14.2.1 fairly soon, it's hard to say, maybe we'll see one in a couple weeks, but if we do, of course, I'll let you know.
If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.